Hi, and welcome to Bits of Blender. I'm here with my boy Richard. Hello! And uh, before we pop open Blender, I'm going to uh, mention it's, it's been a few weeks since we uh, recorded Bits of Blender. There's been a lot going on. Been real busy with work. But also, uh, if you've been reading my blog, you know that uh, there was problems with YouTube. YouTube was not... It, it decided to stop accepting FLVs, which is the best quality format for uh, screencasting, and uh, I ended up with some experimentation using a different format, which, while it turned out okay, was still not as good. It did have the side benefit, though, of uh, those videos that I used the different format uh, were available for iPhone, whereas my other videos were not. And uh, uh, also, uh, we, uh, gosh, the last time I think we... Uh, I just finished up the materials and textures video for Cartoon Smart, and then last weekend uh, I worked on a Logic Bricks video for Cartoon Smart that should be released pretty real soon. So... Behind the scenes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm popping open Blender. What we're going to show you today is uh, ambient occlusion. Now, what is ambient occlusion? Ambient, I'm, first I'm going to do is, uh, let's, let's go ahead and just look through the camera. I hit zero on the keypad. And I'm going to make a couple objects. So I'll do a shift D on the box. Uh, and then I'm going to hit escape and just I'm just going to drag this box over. And then uh, I'm going to hit the space bar, add mesh, UV sphere. I'll just take the defaults and we'll drag it over here. We're just using the widgets. Not doing anything fancy. <laughs> yeah. Hit the space bar, add mesh plane, scale, hitting the S key, 10. <laughs> All right, so I'm doing, I can't resist doing the fancy stuff. Then I'm going to drag the widget to hold the control key so it snaps down on the grid. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're, we've basically started with our default scene. So we've got our default camera, we got our uh, default cube, and, and our default light. Now, what happens if we get rid of this default light, X, and we render this, what are we going to see? Uh, am I allowed to speak? <laughs> <laughs> of course, you're the co-host. <laughs> Sorry, I thought it was a secret to know. I'm just kidding. Okay, it's going to be all black. So we, we'll do a quick render. Let's, let's bring it over here, and uh, I'm going to render it smaller so it's quick. Render. Sure enough, we got a black scene because there's no light in the scene. Now, ambient light is light that's all around us. So, uh, you can actually adjust your ambient light in Blender with these sliders. You can give it a, have it a certain color. So that light that's all around us, that's indirect, we can simulate that in 3D by setting our ambient light. So now I've set it to totally white, where this is light that's all around. What do you think we're gonna look at here? It's gonna be all white. Can we give it a quick render? Yeah, it's almost all white. It's it's not 100%. Uh, but all these objects are in here, but they're so uniformly lit that we can't see them. They're just like one big chunk. So even if here, let's <laughs> let's 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 move. Let's just take one of these and, and move it to the edge real quick. Or or better yet, I'll just do a, a shift D, and then I'll just drag it over the edge, and then I'll do that render again. And you can see over here the edge of that object uh, that. You know, it's there. It's just perfectly, so perfectly lit that we can't see it. It's meaningless to our, to, to us. So, ambient light is light that's all around. So now I'm going to set this, just set it back to, to black. Blue. Yeah, you could. We could if we do a quick render here. We could see our now our ambient light is is blue. Uh. So, uh, what a, a nice feature in Blender is called ambient occlusion. And it's that sounds real mystical, and it's but it's not. <laughs> and then it's occlusion. real cryptic here. <laughs> it's real cryptic here, uh, amb -oc. Uh But what that means is ambient is you know that's the light all around us, and when you occlude something, you block it, so you're preventing. So what are we blocking? We're blocking the ambient light. And how is it determined? Well, it's determined by based on 
the proximity to other objects. So I'm just clicking this on with the defaults. I'm hitting render F12. And you'll see it takes a little bit longer. No light source in the scene. But notice the pattern of darkness. Uh, it determines how it's going to block the ambient light based on the proximity of other objects. So you could see where these uh, cubes are next to uh, uh, the, the plane or next to each other or uh, the sphere, the sides of this sphere get further and further away so the light on the, the fall off of the light looks real natural. So it's a interesting natural, it looks like a, a hazy day. Mm -hmm. looks like clouds are over, we don't have any direct sunlight. Well, we can go ahead, let's go ahead and put another light back in. Add lamp. Can I see? Okay, um, all right. wait, if it was blocking the light, wouldn't it look like it was, it would, when there was no light? Well, no, it, what it does is, uh, in the scene, Let's do F11 to look at our last render buffer. And what it is is when you see, it's determining how much it should block based on how close something else is. So these objects that are real close, you see it's dark in here. Uh, as you get further away, like this object here, it's not quite as dark. And on this side, this side of it, there's nothing really that close to it other than, you know, maybe this plane. And on the sphere, the sphere, the sides get closer and closer as the bottom of the sphere comes in. So you could see that the darkness here at the bottom of the sphere and the darkness on the plane. Mm. And if we were to, let's go ahead and lift up one of the spheres. I'm sorry, one of the cubes. Uh, so we, we lifted it up. We'll do a quick render. You have the light on. Ooh, I'm sorry. That's going to that's gonna ruin my thing here. Let me get rid of that. F12, and we got to watch time. We're running out of time. Uh, mm -hmm. See how I lifted it up? You can see that the bottom of this cube is close to the plane, so it's going to be darker, but then as you get further away, you get some, some fall off. Mm -hmm. So it determines how much light should be blocked based on proximity of objects to objects to each other. Mm -hmm. So I'm talking quick because we're running out of time. Mm -hmm. uh, add mesh. Oh, I'm sorry. Add lamp. Lamp. And... Uh, Let's just drag this over here. So you can have a light in your scene. And uh, just like you could normally, I'm going to make sure that uh, on the light we have uh, uh, shadows. Okay. And what I'm going to do first, I'm going to do a quick render with no ambient occlusion. F12. Ooh, that looks cool. And uh, in fact, I really want to move this light so we can... Uh, see some shadow a little bit more and let's do a render Ooh. so you can see those shadows that's no ambient occlusion now we're just going to click it on with the default F12 Ooh, that and it's cool. nice because what's happening is it's mixing that ambient occlusion that we saw without a light with the light so you get these shadows that look a little bit more natural it's an easy quick way, well, not quick in rendering, but <laughs> to set up it's quick, uh, to get uh, uh, some lighting that looks a bit more natural, more like the global illumination technique that you can use with some renderers, like Yoffrey and stuff, but uh, without getting into that. So it's like a, a, a quick method of that. Now, one last thing I want to say is that for you folks who are avoid, it uses ray tracing, so you have to have ray tracing on, you see that? But there is... Uh, an ambient occlusion that you could set uh, to approximate and then turn ray tracing off. Uh, the reason you might do that is it, it, it still looks good, uh, but if you're trying to render quickly, ray tracing is not the fastest. So, But if you want a little bit more natural look, you can set it to approximate, turn ray tracing off, and still uh, have, have, a, have a nice look. And I, I, I believe they did that with uh, Big Buck Bunny. Uh, they did a lot of rendering without ray tracing to, you know, because it was so processor intensive. Another thing to note is on ambient occlusion. Before we finish up here, oh, we're out of time. Thanks. Bye. Get Big Buck Bunny.